For the combined experiment, we need to address the issue of permutations and combinations. So let's do that. Now, related to combined experiment, there is the concept of permutation and combination. So uh, what is the difference between permutations and combination? Let's look at the simple example here. We have three balls, red, green, and blue. And you are asked to select two balls. How many possibilities are there? Is this combination or permutations? Are you just going to pick two balls or are you going to put them in a certain order? So for this experiment, if you are interested in a specific order, like you're going to display them, then you can take red, uh, sorry, blue, red and green, or red and, and blue. And in total, you have six different possibilities. There are six different permutations. Okay, we're choosing two, we're permutating two out of three. So the total possibilities are six. But if somebody, this is called permutations. But if somebody is only interested in just the colors, the order is, I mean, the way we display them is not important. So we have only three possibilities. This is called three choose two, or choose two out of three, while P stands for permutations. So we can formally define permutations as the number of possible sequences where order is important. The order is important. This guy is considered different than this guy because the order where we put the color is important. Now, in all possibilities, in all cases, we are assuming that we are not replacing the ball. If I, get, if I get the first ball to be blue, I cannot get another one blue. And this is why you can see here in permutations, there is no replacement. We cannot choose the same item twice. Now, similarly, we can come up with an equation. So, permutations are out of n. How do you find this? How, how do you find the number of possibilities in general? I show you the example of three. We have six permutations. But in general, to pick the first ball, you have n possibilities, where n is the total number. To pick the second ball, since one is already out, we have n minus one, and so on and so forth. So we have n times n minus one until we get to choose the total number r. Okay? So we have this is the total number, and this gives you the permutation. This mathematically can be written as n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. n is the total number, r is the number of drawn balls or items. Remember that there is no replacement, we cannot get the same ball twice. We can define combination to be very similar to permutations, but the order is not important. So if you change the if you flip the location of red and blue, this is for me, it's one thing. So we expect always the number of permutations, number of combinations to be less than the number of permutations in general. And you can see that for every case, for every selection of R, there will be R factorial, which has repetition. So I can take these two balls or three or four, reorder them. They are possible. There are R factorial for the number of possibilities. So we have to remove this from here. So if we can write the equation for n choose r, we can write it this for format or this format. The bigger number is the top, where we choose from, r is the number of balls that we draw. So this is going to be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. It's the same equation, but also we divide by r factorial. Why? Because we consider these are just repetitions, so we have to remove them. This, for example, and that, they are the same. This guy and this guy are the same. So always we need to remove this, and we, this is why we divide by r factorial. Okay, please remember these two equations because you'll need them to make things faster instead of deriving them all the time. Now, a permutation is an ordered combination. Permutations is combination, but when you order them, we call it permutations. Now, remember that also the combination is used when we do binomial expansion. And this is why sometimes this is called binomial expansion, because if you have x plus y raised to power n, if you want to find the coefficient, then you need the choose here operator or the combination operator. We're familiar with square, cube, but as, as this number grows up to five or six, if you want to expand, 
you better use the formula. Now, in the second example, we'd like to look at selecting three letters or four or five, uh, three letters out of five. Okay. So how many possibilities are there? A natural question would be to say, are we looking at combination or permutation? So if you look at, uh, if you are interested in the order, if you are making words, then you look at permutations because they're going to be different. But if you are just looking at what letters were drawn, then you look at combination. To show this here on the side, here are the possible selected letters. We can have A, B, C, A, A, B, D. So this will give you the number of combinations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 possibilities. If you want to apply the formula, then it's going to be, uh, we have 5 factorial divided by uh, 5 minus 3, we're picking 3, 3 factorial times 2 factorial, which is equal to 5, and to 4, and to the remaining is 3 factorial. We have 3 factorial here, so then we have 2 factorial, this is going to cancel out. We have 5 times 4, 20 over 2, which is 10. So this confirms that we have 10 possibilities here. If you want the permutations, then you drop this division okay so it will be 5 factorial divide by 2 factorial so we continue here 3 2 1 so this is are going to cancel we have 5 times 4 times 3 and that makes it um, 60 possibilities which are here we have 10 in each which make them a total of uh, 60 so we had now two examples about permutations and combinations and you need to remember the equations, you need to remember the formulas for how to get them and you need to remember the basic meaning. I would like to remind you before I proceed that in both combinations and permutations there is no replacement as you can see here there is no replacement not replaced not replaced we cannot use the same letter or ball again. The major difference is one order is important, the other one is order is not important. Now let's do some examples for the permutations and combinations. The first question says, drawing four cards out of 52, how many permutations are there? So the question specify he wants permutations, which means the order is important as if we are displaying the cards. So the order is important. We can use the permutation formula. Uh, which is, we're, we're taking 4 out of 52, so it's going to be 52 factorial, divided by the difference factorial. And um, what you get is 52 times 51 times 50 times 49, because there are 52 possibilities for the first one, for the first card, and there are uh, 51 possibilities for the second card, 50 and 49. The totals become 6 million plus. Now, in the second problem says a coach has five athletes and he wants to make a team made of three how many teams can he make so it's now our job to decide whether this is combination or permutation selecting athletes in the team is basically clearly we're just picking the names the order is not important because they're going to all to play so uh, it's a combination problem although it's not explicit and we can use the combination formula. So we're selecting 3 out of 5. 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by the difference factorial, which ends up to be 10. But here we notice also that from the sketch here from the diagram that selecting the 3 is equivalent to selecting the 2 who are spare, who are not going to play or join the team. So you can also prove that... Uh, Selecting r of out of n is just like selecting n minus r out of n. For example, here if we do uh, 5, choose 2 out of 5, we get 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which is the same as choosing 3. Okay, so this is the general identity that we observe. 
So these are two examples for combinations and permutations. We will need this when we go to Bernoulli trials in our coming video. So there are other possible notations for, for the, the combinations we mentioned, like n choose r, but we're just um, using one of them. Please keep with us, continue. We're going to go into Bernoulli trials.